Good morning, folks. We've got to discuss some space weather, take a look at the storms, and get a bit of science news from beneath our feet. But let's get started, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star has absolutely no sunspots. We're back to a blank disk. No filaments of note either. And near the end, just south of the equator on the left, we see yet another coronal hole extension reaching for low latitude. Solar flaring is just, well, not. Solar wind continued dropping intensity. We do have the potential for more intensified streams, but thus far has been quiet conditions. We have managed to avoid a KP0 day, though, which is good health news. You can see today in 211 angstroms how difficult it is to pick out proper coronal holes with only this wavelength. Much of the south appears to be a coronal hole, but that is just part of the weak corona of sunspot minimum. I'll go ahead and toss 193 angstroms up one more time here so you can see the difference between proper coronal holes and the sparse regions currently also registering black in 211. Now on to the storms. We've got lightning here, gorgeous convergence line running up the central states. High winds were more of a story than the lightning, however, which actually had its highest U.S. concentrations near the Mississippi coastline, points overwhelming the entire southern border of the state. We also had mesoscale imagery of Hurricane Fabio off the Mexican coastline. It's going to hit that power mark today in major hurricane status this week. But last night, it likely had its most perfect penumbral earth spot display. Those lines in the clouds are often called whistlers, but they're one of the key similarities between earthly lows and sunspots. The lightning picked up heavily in the armband approaching the coastline this morning as those earth spot penumbra got worked by the turbulent storm system itself. Top lithospheric note of the last day was in the Philippines. Small volcanic eruption at the southern edge of our top alert zone heading into today. This is from the Prediction Center at QuakeWatch.net showing the typhoon that will head north at the Blot Echo Zone. Veteran observers know the highest risk zones are found by looking at electrical anomalies presented by water movement and deep seismicity. We have a new paper detailing how the action of water and those rocks below are driving these electrical anomalies at subduction zones. And just a quick note because this community loves dissing subduction zones. Forgetting the fact that what I just described is how we predict earthquakes, plate tectonics does have a few issues, but subduction isn't one of them. 100% of blot echoes hit plunged cold slabs. All of them. You can't have one hit something else because liquid rock does not work that way. Now on to a confirmation of what many of you know, but from a different perspective. While on their way to detailing the tiny risk of a superstorm in any given cycle, they showed how much weaker this last solar maximum was than the previous ones. Folks, this cycle's geomagnetic storms were at least twice as scarce in number, much closer to about 75% down by our numbers, and down enormously in the strength of those storms. Remember, we got no KP9 events this cycle, not one. Website members, you've got your July Planetary Geometry posted as your 54th Deeper Look episode on the year. If you guys aren't following the Mobile Observatory Project on Facebook, we're going to start doing some giveaways again here soon as we enter our website's birthday month. Link is below with all the others underneath this video. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.